Welcome to the booth of Head Acoustics. At the moment, Head Acoustics visit a lot of exhibitions because there's one big reason. No, actually, there are a lot of reasons. We have developed so many powerful features for software and the hardware. Every acoustic engineer will just love. So we like to show. And if you cannot visit an exhibition right now, we come to you in this virtual meeting, all right? Let me show you in a quick overview what powerful tools we have invented in our software tools. To illustrate, I have a simple example here. Uh, this is a car as a test object. And uh, well, we measure the sound of a human hearing perception by the binaural head, like this. You can see it. Yeah, it's a direct online view if the sensor is working and what are the values. Uh, we have a tri accelerometer. You can see this here up top and also in there. And furthermore, we can look at sound intensity and impact and shaker forces just in one view to get you started. The feature I like the most of the last year is called standardized testing. And before, it's a simple way to explain it, I just show it to you. If you want to do maybe a powertrain noise analysis, it's not just one condition to be measured. It's this part load, full load, idle, coast down, it has to all be sorted. It's, it's quite complex and you have to be really concentrated. I don't like that. So we make it much more easier. Let me show it to you. So all you gotta do is I open my standardized test project and the project knows what to do. So all I have to do is just say, okay, make a powertrain noise analysis. The car starts and then we start the first recording. Run up is recorded, the recorder is running until the end velocity. Now we go a coast down and the second is also recorded right now and it's counting, say so this is the coast down. The next measurement will be a idle noise. So everyone stops and recording is running. Okay, and as you see, this is all running without any contact. <laughs> so I can go for a coffee now and let this machine and the software and the hardware do the work. So this was a full load run up. Now still we have half percentage now. Normally we always do a repetition of each condition to be sure that there's not a unique event. So this is repeatable. And that's what we do. We have already second time of hard load. This is a second time coast down. Now there will be a second time idle with a little more heat. Starting stopping and the last thing to do really a fast run up so go on get the trigger and there you go and that easy the cool thing is our all measures were done so we are already done so we stop this and we're done all the measurements are named and sorted the way it should be it's organized and it's named what it's inside so this was a tracker status original which gear which model which engine is inside all this is automatically documented without just with one click I like that. <laughs> so what I can do now is I want to analyze this. Wow, sounds a lot is not. These are the measurements of today. And all I have to do is just take all the measurements and say process with a standardized test project. And he suggested me to do a powertrain. Yes, it's, it's a powertrain analysis and say, okay, we pick the right analysis, choose the right sensors. We have abrasion, we have airborne sensors, different kinds of options, different kinds of analysis to be needed and has to be sorted in a PowerPoint, which normally takes two or hours, four hours, six hours next day. Okay, let me show how long, we, oh, there we are. So all I have to do is just say maximize and there is my analysis of the runner I just made. It's just 30 seconds later, I got it. Let me get, give you a quick view. Airborne channels run up over time, you see the level fine. Structure borne channels run up, oh, we see that direction is quite high. Yeah. This is just the first page. Second page, we see here second run comparison. Full throttle, second run comparison, channel two, channel one. This is all sorted. This is full throttle, this is coast down. This was a 3.6 liter engine, this was a zero number, this was the date of today. Okay, like this. Next channel, you see this was the idle measurement. And you can also make a quality check. You can compare it the first with the second one, how big is the difference? And you compare the result with a limit. So if you're below that line, you know this was a good one, okay? So there's a lot of action and quite easy. And all you have to do is just say, do it like we always do, okay? Maybe you will ask, okay, this is power trend and what, but I normally do road noise analysis. How can I do road noise analysis? The same way. It's a completely new idea what to measure, but all you gotta do is select another task. This may be a road noise analysis, okay? So we automatically say we need three different driving conditions. Okay, we are ready. The team is ready when you are, I'm ready. So I just say road noise and there we go. 
30 kilometers per hour, holding, recording is starting already. Then we go up to 70 kilometers per hour, holding, starting, keep it like that. And we need a coaster from 100 to 20 just to get the full range of LV velocity. It's already recording has started. It's so easy. <laughs> just hold on the last seconds. 9, 11, C. And stop. All measurements are in. So I say, okay. And like you see before, uh, now, oh. now we put all the recordings in the same folder. Oh, damn, how can I make it? It's not your problem, okay? I think we can do this for you. All you have to do, today, I made some recordings for road noise. So today, <laughs> this, you are only you need to know, uh, process with standard testing, but this time we choose road noise as a new task to analyze. You want to do a road noise analysis, we've done the recordings and we've done the analysis, like you want it. So for the constant situation, 30 kilometers, airborne channels, level average, this is your frequency spectrum and this is for 70 kilometers. This is a free field, it's automatically named like it was done in the recording, so this is a reflexible tool. And below we have the coast term on 100 to 25 everything's in. On the second page we can see what's happening at the vibration channels over time. So everything is sorted the way you can easily go through it. At this point you might think, hold on, road noise analysis, I need a lot of channels. Yeah? And this device only have one, two, three, four, five, eight channels. Look, each tire should have three directional. So three axle or four, it's four. I need 12 channels. and so. Actually, six channels are missing. So how, what are you telling me? You can't do road noise analysis with this small device. Looks like that, but um, see, if you want to have more channels, you can add just more channels. So <laughs> the little variety of special channels modules, you can just connect them, hot plug, and you get more channels. Very easy. So for a lot of applications, you still have a really small mobile battery powered system. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. What do we else have? Um, sound power, for example. To calculate the sound power, of your measurement object, there are different ways to do it. A really handy one is using a sound intensity probe like this one. So now you get to know how many points you have to measure in which distance. And this is depending on the size of your object and the way it's mounted. Is it standing on the ground or it's hanging on the wall? There is an official D norm. You can read this. Now, we make it different. You just have to know how big is your object and how it's mounted. <laughs> Just type it in the software and we give you the grid. So we show you the test object and the according measurement grid you need to follow to have the official value. But we still have the problem, there I can see the grid, but I need to know where to place my intensity probe according to the object right now. <laughs> I need some devices. So one way would be I using some device like this and then I'll start to measure the right place. Hold on, in the size. And this is extremely time consuming and no, no. Another way would be if you build a grid like on your computer and use it as a reference line. So like this, and then you can say, okay, I need to place it here. I need to place it here. Yeah a lot of extra time needed in preparation. And if you have another object which is a little bit bigger, you always have to build another grid. We say no, 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 no. All we want, all we want is to have this grid I see on the computer here applied on the real object so I can follow the right spots in the space. And the solution is this device. It's a HoloLens which gets connected via Bluetooth to our software. And now this data is transferred to this lens. I can still see my test object by real, but additionally the grid information I need so much is now as a hologram around my object. So I start the engine, we have a constant situation. Now we need to scan all the points. First point is displayed in here, just there. Okay, 10 seconds averaging time and up to the next point. I'm guided by the software and a view on my object. I don't need the display anymore. All I need to know is just look at my object and I'm guided to all the measurements. After each point, the result is calculated in the software and directly transferred to my HoloLens so I can see the result instantly. 
yes, it's correct up to the next point. There's no way to make wrong. Instant result is the key. It's easy, it's intuitive, it's fast, it's powerful and yeah, it's fun. <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of engineers on this exhibition getting in a queue just to test this completely new innovation of head acoustics and they love it. So that's what we offer, that is our solution. And it's, the big advantage is if you have a different object anywhere, maybe on the rooftop, these uh, air conditioning systems, now you don't have to prepare anything. All you have to say is this is the size of my object and you get a grid transformed in front of you. You just have to follow the lines and then you can say, yes, you are done. And this is your value. Let's have a look at the results of our measurement object. You get a result which not to show you the main overview total level, you just have to believe, you additionally can see where are your problem zones. From each point, from the top, you see where are the hot zones. This is your official value from each side and this is the value you can write in your papers. But you can also select what just this frequency is about. So using head acoustics, you don't get just one value from the sound power measurement, you get a clear advice from which side at which frequency you should work on if you want to improve is value. One more to talk about, as you see, the last topic would be model analysis. It's quite complex in the mathematics and to do is it's, it's, you have to plan this. For a quick impression, we want to do a model analysis of this engine hood. So no microphones are needed anymore. We have an accelerometer, triaxle, and as an excitation, maybe we use it, an impact hammer. So we plan an engine hood analysis and there's our model and we see all the measurement points we want to measure and see graphically where is the reference point. The orientation is quite important. And then we are guided through it. This is the next point to we hit. So we just say, okay, and then we do that. The cool thing is the quality is checked automatically. So just keep on striking. The settings are done just the way it fits perfectly to the tip, to the hammer, to the mass and the damping of this object, okay? So this will fit to a good result. And then move on to the next point, okay? If you've done all the points, you automatically guide it to do a model analysis and there are your results. Um, getting the modes of the, all these impact measurements, the transfer function you have required, need a lot of experience. Uh, the best thing is you have an engineer with doing the, since 30 years model analysis. Most companies don't have that. That's why we have additionally equipped the software with a neural network. This artificial intelligence has been trained with over hundreds of thousands of transfer functions to always get the best setting for model analysis. That is like gaining the experience of 20 years of measurement practice. And this experience is now available for you from the first time you start the software. Just say go in automatic mode. This is a perfect setting and furthermore, another algorithm is checking the quality. So this is not good, this is, this is a stable, stable, stable. So it's sorted all the stable modes just in the list. <laughs> You're just there. Just click through the list and see all the stable modes of your test object. I know, <laughs> for me as well. This is awesome. It's a game changer and I love it. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what, what if I don't want to use an impact hammer? I want to use a shaker yeah, to get a sinus sweep or white noise, pink noise, all this stuff, okay? Here, yeah, then, uh, as you can see here, there is a Q source shaker we use. It's very tiny. It's it's inertia shaker, which is very really simple. You don't need to put a stinger on it and make it without any momentum. Just hook it on and say play. And here we go. What? What? Where is the sound coming from? The sound file? What do you mean? You? Where's the playback device? Over there. Oh. Hold on, are you telling me that I can do powertrain noise completely automatic, road noise completely automatic, sound power measurement guided, model analysis with impact and even shaker tool with just this simple one handled device and one software? Yeah. Well, but this is, this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Good to know. Oh, this is called Artemis and this is called Squad Rigger 3. Oh, wait, 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 we haven't even talked about one of the most important advantages of our measurement technology. Saves millions of dollars and 
speed up work tremendously. I think that's best done in a separate video. Then you find this topic faster again. It's awesome. <laughs> See you.